Our next question really is uh, what advice would you give to like dancers or people who are aspiring to start pursuing dance as a career, but they're like, I don't know if I should. Pursuing dance as a career. So this actually goes into kind of like the second reason why I started my company. I think it kind of comes from like, let me turn this down. Uh, I feel like someone who wants to pursue dance as a career, I feel like as women, there are a lot of challenges that no one told me about. Mm. <laughs> so like in my, in my dance team for my kids, like it's not obvious in a lot of the things I'm teaching them, but I'm going to be phasing in once we start meeting in person again, I'm going to be phasing in some stuff about contracts mm. and about how to make sure that you're reading the contract. What's a good contract. What's a shitty contract or child friendly. Labor laws. <laughs> <laughs> so, that I think there's like a lot of sexism that you have to be able to navigate. Like mm -hmm. you're never going to like, it's not going to be eradicated. Right. But there's like ways to navigate it that are helpful. And then there's like ways to navigate it where you look like a crazy person, mm. so, even though you're not. So like a lot of what I'm teaching is like, I guess my advice to somebody who wants to pursue dance is you have to know what you're talking about. And you have to come up with solutions. You have to come up with your own creative solutions. So like when there is something you don't like about the way a dance team is run or the way that some things are going down on a gig, mm -hmm. you know, I have some gigs where all of a sudden you show up and this, dir this director of this music video was like listing all the clothing items that I was about to take off. And I was like, that was not what we agreed on. This, that, that was not contract, was it? It was not because I didn't have one because oh. I just moved out to LA and I didn't know anything about contracts. What is a contract, right? So I just showed up thinking, oh yeah, it's like a friend of a friend who makes music. This is going to be so cool. And then it immediately became like an unsafe situation. I show up, there's all these drunk guys on the set. Oh man. They're not, by the way, working on the set. They're just there. Homies. Uh, so yeah. yeah. God. I okay. was like, that's interesting. Like, because all the equipment looked very cheap, but then like the bar setup looked real expensive. So I was like, <laughs> the only thing that they wanted. Okay. Yeah. So it was, you know, I feel like if you are empowered and you're you're putting in the work and the time and the energy to learn your craft, you're gonna be able to spot some bullshit much quicker, and you're gonna be able to not maybe even enter those situations in the first place. Mm -hmm. But then you know, at the same time, if you are really educated, you do show up to places and there's things that you're like not loving, you know, like you're being harassed by your dance director, for example, which has happened to me, you know, you, you can find ways to talk about those things that stick to the facts, mm. right? Because that's what people are ready to hear. They're ready to hear like a creative solution. They're ready to hear like, well, you know, would you guys mind if I talk to you guys, the, the board of directors, can I, can I just come to your meeting for just two minutes and just talk to you guys about my idea for our costumes for the next set? Cause I really had some good ideas. And if you can like come through with ideas as opposed to he's harassing me and I don't like it. And I don't want to wear what you're telling me to wear. Right. It's like, mm -hmm. that, no one's going to listen to that shit, even though you're right. Yeah. No one's going to listen to that. So I feel like someone coming in wanting to be successful in dance industry. Like that's what I would say is arm yourself with knowledge and really get in touch with your own creative muse, like your own energy. Yeah. Like meditate, do whatever you need to do. Because then when, when something doesn't sit right with you, you're not just sitting there like, oh, I hate what's happening. Oh, this sucks because I'm really passionate about dance, but I'm really pissed. You can just find a way to make that situation, you know, better or what, what it ideally should be. Yeah. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of moments, especially for, you know, someone who's just starting out, you're going to not, not every situation is going to be ideal and it takes a while to find your tribe. So mm -hmm. like on the journey, put in the work, <laughs> don't be afraid to say no to things that make you uncomfortable so that you can keep your integrity and keep your light shining bright. So when things do come forward where you're like, Ooh, that's what I want to do. You can jump in with both feet. Mm with full confidence and you can contribute and then people are going to want you there yeah so yeah it, it, i feel like a lot of people are going to try to especially for first starting they're trying to take advantage of people who are inexperienced and don't know what's up yeah like they because they just want to you know give you an opportunity quote unquote 
mm-hmm. exposure and all that and it's yeah. and and again those without a contract that means they can pretty much try to tell you to do anything anything could have happened yeah so that's which is not a very good situation for you know it at all because you know it's i mean you, you do yes you do you would have the option to to leave but most people in my opinion just like they feel the pressure of trying to make something happen for themselves they kind of pressure themselves to stay even though it's not good for them so, so. true that's a fucking life skill we watched i watched a movie that i don't like that much called the girl with the dragon tattoo based on that book oh yeah that was a great book i haven't read the book i'm excited to read the book i think it's going to be better than the movie i didn't really enjoy the movie but one part that was like fucking so dope which is like completely exactly what we're talking about is like this dude without like giving away too many details. There's like this like fucked up person and they're like, Oh yeah. Just like, just come with me for a second alone. Just like, yeah, just come into like this place alone with just me. Yeah. Come on. And like, because the person was quote nice or smiling, the other person who knew something was off went anyway. Mm. They followed this like creepy ass person even though they knew something was wrong because they felt obligated to be nice. And then the person just fucks you up because they're like, you knew something was wrong, but you came anyway. Mm. And I was like, oh, yeah. dude, that's so true. Yeah. And in spaces, we have to be so aware of ourselves because it's like, it's your passion. And if your passion is the same as your career, like that hits so much harder when you're in an unsafe space, like it just hit, it hurts on every level. <laughs> it's something you love so dearly, but then it's violated by some yeah. fuck. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. and especially with, I don't know if you've heard anything that's happened with, that's happening in the dance community with, yeah. you've heard? Okay. Yeah. That's kind of, whew. I know. It's just wild. Like, um, yeah. what are you thinking about? Like as a dance leader? the head of a company like what's going through your mind when you're looking at those things uh, well the the first thing that's really coming up for me is like how much ego can get in the way or how much people's you know when they get this quote-unquote fame how much people start op- really operating from ego and start of, instead of like really looking for the best of other people for me as well as like i don't know i guess disappointed in a sense that w- that shitty people were put on a pedestal yeah because, you know, like, I, as much as I, I talk shit, I give them into the, any of the temper tantrum rehearsals, but yet, but like, or but you were at the meetings, you saw the dynamic, I talk shit to the whole team. <laughs> yes. Because it's like, but it's like out of love, but like, it's, you know, the, I don't know, like, it, it I haven't really verbalized it. I have thought a lot, I've thought a lot about it. And uh, it's just f- disappointing uh, that it's happening. And I'm also like, I've also questioned myself, like, have I, being a leader, like, what did I put someone in an uncomfortable situation? But I was so blind because my ego was in the way. So I'm like, I'm like have, who have I put in that situation? Did I put in anyone in that situation? Because like one, you know, it sucks to be canceled. But two, it's like, it sucks. Like for me, because I, I've, I've shared with you, like what I went through in the previous the reaction video, like what I had to do, like 52 weeks of anger management, all that stuff. Okay. With the, yeah. So I shared with you, like, like that stuff, I, I like that has helped me kind of look back and see where I was in the wrong and then i just like a lot of you know the, especially the 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 people who did the hurting it's, and it's very I, I would say abuser mentality or talk where they would say it takes two to do this or they yeah, or, is- or the gaslighting it's yeah. like yeah. you know it, there's that the whole thing is like you you don't get to be the one that says if they got hurt or not if you did the hurting so and then as, as a person who has done the hurting you know, it's it, the things that are really lacking is empathy of what's happening and taking responsibility of it, even though like, you know, you in your head, you may not have done anything wrong. In fact, if someone's in, there's a human being in front of you that's hurting, you know, to dismiss it is, I think, you know, is cruel because that, that it, it's, essential if you can be a part of someone's healing why not but then that's the thing as someone who has a lot of fame and a lot of attention and all that stuff it can get to their head and they can see feel untouchable they can get away with certain things 
So it's like, yeah, in a sense, it, it, it sucks. But also as someone else who's seeing it, I'm kind of, <laughs> for lack of a better way of saying it, I'm glad it is happening to someone else because then I get to learn from it. Because <laughs> then I'm like, because it's a reminder for me, like, how, I, and I think I just discussed this with my girlfriend. I, I feel like in the very, very early days of FanBase, I feel like I could have gone that route. But thankfully, there were people that were, like, they were brave enough to call me out. And I, I'm grateful that I was willing to l really reflect on the feedback and like sh and shift how I was approaching leadership. But yeah, like, ultimately, I want to create a truly a safe environment where I can talk shit to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> the healthy balance yeah because because yeah, it's, it's cool because it's like they they you see them create all these amazing things they're famous they're instagram famous they're doing all these gigs but it's like in my head i was always like because i've heard some of the, th the things that happened i was like, i actually wasn't expecting to talk about this because i was trying to avoid talking about it because i kind of wanted to make it into a, a group podcast but I also want I also want to be respectful to the people staring to, to sharing their stories because we're outside looking in. Right. So but like just coming from the perspective of so, someone who's uh, led and witnessing. Yeah. Like I, I always wondered at what cost did you do to get there? Who did like I'm not going to say who did you have to hurt, but how did you how much did you have to push? Like not just yourself, because, you know, it was your team, you know, like because there's a level of excellence that they do have with the with i guess the technical aspect of dancing but what about the culture which is for me is much more important than dancing really cool because i want i'd much rather be on stage with people who are like we can look to each other on stage and like know that this is going to be an amazing memory and we can talk about it you know next week and or like if you fucked up or the experience overall because i mean you know the whole thing life is just a bunch of experiences that's it and if we ha and if the process to getting there yes it's hard work but you don't have to make it any harder than it is by being a dick about it right so what about you like what are your thoughts because you're a leader yourself and i've been thinking a lot about this so my i have a lot of thoughts but my big takeaway is learning how to say sorry so there's times in my life where just in just one on one with friends, family, whoever, where I've just been like, <laughs> <laughs> I love how animated you are. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, as soon as I say, I'm sorry. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it just, it feels good to say sorry. So I'm trying to figure out like, what is the best way to educate educate my students on their own rights and how they deserve to be respected. Right. So like, I do have a pretty good atmosphere of like, I'm always like asking them, like, what do you guys need? You know? So I want them to practice understanding what they need. Like, do you need water? Do you need a break? What do you, do you need to run again? What do you guys need? Cause I'll have a plan, but I'll kind of modify based on what we, what we want. Cause I'm working with children. It's like, <laughs> 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 they, you know, they have their own, there's a lot going on. Yeah. Like so that's kind of my big takeaway is like, you know, if I, if I ever teach something like, and I'm like, Oh, it was actually on and one, just like getting in this habit of, Oh, I'm sorry, you guys, it's actually this, my bad, you know, and just cause I always do that, but it's just like kind of affirming in me the importance of always being ready to say you're sorry, because then when it comes to bigger issues, like the bigger issues probably won't come up because you're already in the mindset of like, how do I respect people the most? It's yeah. Like, not like what's like, how good can we fucking get? It's like, how do I, how do I do the most good for you? Mm -hmm. You know, being like the mindset. So definitely I feel like the apology situation was a whole situation that is completely invalidating, completely gaslighting in that particular, what's going on in the dance communities. Mm -hmm. I mean, across the board, just awful. So you know, being able to, being able to truly feel sorry about some shit you did wrong. Like that's tough. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, you know, embodying being sorry and not just saying, oh, I'm sorry. And just like saying it to say it, yeah. you know, it, it, cause some people, yeah, just say it just to like get them off of their backs. Yeah. And making, making like key adjustments. So like, there's like, I, I had a conversation actually when this came up 
mm. with some parents on my team. Mm. Like that could have gone really bad, <laughs> you know, but I just want, I want them to understand like, cause I have them fill out these privacy forms about when you're working with children, I don't want to talk to your child alone in their bedroom. Please do not hand them your phone. No texting allowed. Da-da-da. You know, I have like a whole form about That's safety. That's good. Yeah. And it's like, I just wanted to let them know, like, there's a context to this, you know, not every teacher is Miss Amanda. So as much as we want to like love the dance community and I brought some of my kids to five juniors. So they're like, oh, hmm. no, we want uh. to be like, yeah, like in it. Right. They want to be like, well, we want to be like that. It's like, we, we also have to understand there's like flaws in every community. There's things that we all got to work on. Yeah. So well, that's kind of my takeaway is like, how, how do I, I'm just like meditating on how do I further educate parents so that they're armed with certain, you know, I'm just trying to empower them. Basically our conversation was, you don't ever have to feel uncomfortable in any dance situation ever. If you don't, if I don't care how many trophies somebody's won, I don't care what they're saying. If you don't like how your child's being treated, I empower you to leave the situation. Period. Yeah. You know, that was kind of our conversation. Because I don't know if they're going to dance with me five years from now, seven years from now. But it's more about just letting them know, like, hey, it's uncomfortable, but this is what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> and I want you guys to just know right now that this is why I have you fill out these forms. This is why we treat your children the way we treat them. Yeah, and then you know about the one that, ha- that happened in Las Vegas, too, right? I'm trying to not. <laughs> okay, yeah. That's... <laughs> to be honest with you, I'm try- I watched, like, all the, like, you know, of that particular team and then once I got to a certain point I said okay like I'm good I understand how these people are operating it's given me a, a framework to better discuss safety protocols with my my clients like that's where I need to be <laughs> yeah I mean it, it's tough because with the dance community there's like it's a community there's no board you know overlooking the whole thing so every every team is it's pretty much the wild west you can run it every through every way you you know, every which way you want. You can practice till six in the morning just so you can compete and all that other stuff. Right. It's, you know, and then people are, you know, obviously they're dedicated or passionate about it, but it's like, again, it goes at the thing, like what, at what cost, like as if you have people that are down and the team as a whole says it's cool, you know, it's, I think, you know, that that's cool. The directors, obviously you want to, it's your job to, you know, obviously push the team to be at the next level but you also have to check in with them as well to see where they're at, which I think is a lot of missing. But yeah, the, the Las Vegas situation is interesting. 